This is the story of how I commissioned a massive mural in Mexico City. I'll be honest with you guys, I've never done anything like this before, and many times throughout the process I had my doubts about how things were going to turn out. In a foreign country, in a foreign language, in a foreign culture, you never know what to expect. I had a lot of crazy ideas growing up of projects that I wanted to do, and these were all ideas that I abandoned over time because they ultimately seemed unrealistic or irrational. I kind of hate that feeling. I feel like I let the kid in me down. And you know what? Maybe sometimes it's okay to be a little bit irrational and unrealistic. Part 1. An idea. So everything started a little over two months ago when I sent an email with the subject line, making something happen. I'm not the most organized person in the world, but one thing I know I am good at is getting the ball rolling. Sometimes it just takes someone willing to throw themselves into something new and risk looking like a dummy to make it a reality. That email was sent to a woman named Sophie, who is the director of Mexican operations for a global not-for-profit organization that promotes peace called Masterpiece. In Masterpiece, we try to unite um, culture of peace and art, and we think muralism, music, the arts are an interesting form of communication. We like to invite the youngsters to try to communicate themselves through the arts in a non-violent way. I immediately connected with this message because it is through art that I've developed all kinds of skills in my own life. Skills that I use to make a living now, but also skills that work like coping mechanisms, really. It is my belief that education exists in many forms, not just in the traditional classroom. And in fact, I've learned so much more about myself and about the world through creating stuff. So when we sat down for coffee and spoke, and she asked me, what do you think about making a mural? I was like, yes. Without fully understanding the, the implications of what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Six days later, I'm meeting with the rest of the Masterpiece team, including Jimena, Jerry, and David. It's a small group of people, but y the passion is there. I mean, I can tell that these people are on a mission. I kind of want to go big or go home, so uh, we're just going to have to see what they have in mind. But uh, why not? Why not just go for it, right? To give a little Ooh. context here, these guys focus on teaching nonviolent communication, which they do through workshops and through art projects. I thought it would be amazing to capture this process of informal education, you know, learning things in an unconventional way. In many ways, I feel like that is what the 21st century calls for. We have to adapt to the times and reinvent ourselves and learn in, in, with what is available to us. Think about it. Most of the time, we learn things through somebody basically telling us how to do it, and then we do it. How cool would it be to learn about things like meaning through symbolism, or even just how to paint by creating a mural where you live? Part 2. How do we make this happen? You would not believe the amount of logistics that go into something like this. Where do we do this? When do we do this? Where do we hold workshops? How do we get people to come? How do we get people to care about this? So, okay, so you're saying, you're saying, what are you saying? Do you have an idea for the dates that this would happen or we still don't know? I'm really worried about the time. <laughs> oh, because we're getting very late to make decisions, yeah. okay. The neighborhood that we decided to work in is called Atlanta. It's a part of town with a difficult history and it's definitely an underserved area. But it's also an area that's trying really, really hard to redefine itself and move into the future. We really wanted to make sure that the whole community was involved, so we reached out to a local school as well as a foundation for youth. Searching for the perfect spot was an eye-opening experience. I mean, you're considering so many different things. For one, I'm looking at these walls and I'm thinking to myself, we have to cover all that? I mean, it's a, it's a huge task. We looked at like a dozen options. There's a lot to think about. There's gonna be a lot of logistics to try and figure this out. The good thing is that I could see this coming to life, and that, that's a very exciting feeling and an exciting thought. This is, there's gonna be complications no matter what. You guys seem very familiar with the process. Yeah. So you're used to it? Yeah. Which I'm glad, that's why you're <laughs> on board with this. This is obviously not something that you can properly do without the help of professionals. So we brought in an artist duo, Raimundo and Dairon, and who could help us make this a reality. It was important that all of us go together to look at things so that we could all be on the same page. 
Just as we arrived, the rain hit super hard and we hid all together under the cover of a tiny convenience store a block away, praying that the worst of it would pass quickly. Check that out. I can't even see. It's flooding? I hope it doesn't stay that way because now we can't even, we can't even leave this little island that we're on. So the rain kind of calmed down a little bit. I don't know how long this is gonna last, uh, but we're taking advantage right now by going to check things out. We ultimately decided to fix and paint over the wall of a home of one of the families living in this community, right across from some abandoned railroad tracks uh, that the community wants to transform into a cycling path. So work has begun to tear down the wall and redo it so that we can paint over it. And uh, honestly, I cannot believe that this is happening. Eventually, you've done everything you can possibly do to prepare beforehand, and it was time to actually make this happen. Part three, actually making it happen. We had a lot of kids and adults come into the workshops that we held across three separate days. It's important that from the collective, we're looking for a way to create a new way of learning, a way alternative to the a la propuesta por lo formal y que eso nos ayuda a repensar a nivel social cómo nos estamos construyendo como sociedad en pleno siglo XXI, por lo menos en México. At first, everybody's a stranger, right? So people were keeping to themselves, but over time, I think we all kind of loosened up a little bit, and it was amazing to see what people were coming up with and drawing. No soy tan buen dibujante, así que pues me parece bastante experimental para mí y es como que una forma nueva de Expressarme. It didn't matter how old you were or where you came from, the fact that you were there meant that you had a voice. <laughs> the artist that we were working with then took all these drawings and created a design, the basis of a design for this mural. I was feeling pretty good. Those workshops were a huge success, and I remember walking over as a group to the location of where we were going to be doing this mural. And I remember seeing the wall, not even close to done still. So today is day one of painting this mural, and I just arrived here a couple of moments ago, and I was like, they're not done fixing the wall. We only had three days slated to do this, and I was, I was set to leave pretty much as soon as things were wrapped up. Um, and so there wasn't a lot of wiggle room in our schedule here. And when I saw that, my heart dropped. I mean, <laughs> I was immediately very afraid that this was not going to work out. And I started doing that nervous laughing thing, looking around at everybody else to see what we should do. We lost a lot of time that day. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I was sweating bullets when I saw that all we had accomplished was paint over everything with white. But it was in that moment that it began to dawn on me that this is part of the process. And it, this was going to be part of the learning experience for me of, of seeing how things are actually done. You know, you can't type A plow through everything in life. Things were not going to work that way. And I had to just trust the people that I was working with. and. I remember thinking to myself, wow. And here I thought I was going to be teaching these people when in reality it's completely the other way around. And slowly things started to come together. It's a really gradual process. Estas imágenes que sacamos por acá son imágenes de la colonia y a partir de ahí sacamos este, estas paletas de color. Y estamos sacando estos colores ahora. Day one has come to a close. We have a ton of work left to do, so, you know, my tendency is to stress out about stuff, but everybody's so positive and optimistic. I'm excited, we'll see. We'll see what comes next. People came and went, and there is a bonding experience that occurs when you're sweating over something with somebody else. I noticed that each day that we came back, we greeted each other more and more like friends. We had some hilarious conversations about music, food, slang, all kinds of stuff. Imagine a lot of cumbia while we worked. Es algo que la gente va a ver y luego luego va a decir, órale, ¿no? ¿Quién lo hizo, no? Debemos de aprender mucho a conocernos primero nosotros como personas, porque realmente si uno no se conoce, 
y no puede formar parte yo creo que de una sociedad. Simplemente el aprender está en uno mismo, está en el, en el querer hacerlo y en esforzarse todos los días para llegar a ser alguien en la vida. ¿no? Me gustó de la forma de cómo fue la convivencia con todos mis compañeros que están aquí. Pues yo espero que los jóvenes tengan más opciones, como saber hacia dónde van, por qué van, para qué van. It's like coming to life. I'm super excited to see what it's going to look like when it's all done. Esto día tras día se van sumando y sumando porque lo estamos viendo en lo que ellos están pintando. La gente se acerca, los demás jóvenes que no han todavía como que están en el proceso de quieren sumarse. This went way beyond creating a mural. You know, I think we were mainly just interested in creating something together and finishing what we started. It was actually a point where I no longer cared about the final result. It didn't matter. I think I was already satisfied with the experience as a whole, time with some very creative kids and adults in a place in the world that wasn't even on my radar a few months ago. Our last day working together, afternoon stretched into evening. The neighborhood kids came out to play. We covered every last inch of the wall as the light faded. There was a sense of mutual respect. I felt very lucky to be there. I'll try not to romanticize it too much, okay? We were all very tired at that point and the mosquitoes were driving me crazy. But I'll speak for myself here at least. I was over the moon with how everything had gone. We spent what felt like an hour gathering around, applauding each other, hugging and bidding our farewells. We painted the community that they all wanted to live in with the symbolism to capture what that meant to them. I think it came out pretty well. I want to say thank you to everybody who was involved in any way in this project, from Masterpiece to Los Cha Cha Cha, to everybody in the community who took part in either designing or painting this mural. And a huge thank you to Skillshare who sponsored this video and helped to make it all happen. I mean, without their support, there would have been no mural. We've teamed up to offer a two month free trial to any of their classes if you use the link in the description below. I've spoken about Skillshare before. They're an amazing company and I really support what they stand for. Truly, I believe that we live in an incredible time where it's never been easier to access so much information and build new skills and create change in your own life. Skillshare offers tens of thousands of courses on anything from sign language to design to photography. I mean, you name it. An annual subscription costs less than $10 a month. I can recommend this class on finding and pursuing your passion. I personally found it very actionable. And this class on going freelance was one that I watched a couple of years ago, actually. And it, it helped me find a little bit of a sense of direction. Anyway, thanks again, Skillshare. Definitely consider using the link down below. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon.